You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. Little do you know, it took me about five times to get that out today. All right, today I am talking about um, all things procrastination. And for those of you who are the Anxiety Podcast um, long-time listeners, you might remember I've talked about this stuff before. So if you listen to this, you're like, right, I need to get stuck into procrastination and doing less of it. Uh, episode 107, How Do I Stop Procrastinating As It Makes My Anxiety Worse, was an Ask Tim JP uh, episode. Uh, episode 203, Just Go For It. Episode 193, Micro Bravery. That was brilliant. Episode 177, Act Fast and Change Fast. Episode 133, Why Your Problems Won't Go Away. And uh, yeah, so check out any of those ones if you want some more inspiration around how to procrastinate less. And I'm going to get into all of that in a moment in a bit more detail. Um, if you're new to the podcast, head on over to anxietypodcast.com where you can get an end anxiety toolkit. You can get the five-week course. I have recently put my anxiety journal, which you can still buy in hard copy, but if you want to just pay less and not pay shipping, I've also made it into an ebook now, so you can download the ebook. It sends you an um, encrypted PDF, and you can then have it locally. So you can uh, print out pages for journaling. You can read through all of the guide and the instructions and all the pearls of wisdom that I included in that book, um, but just have it on hand. So anyway, put it out there as an option. Loads of people uh, went ahead and got a copy last week, which was kind of cool after I spread the word about it. So um, yeah, there you have it. Um, If you are a Patreon of mine, I would just like to give you a special shout out and say thank you so much for contributing to the running of the podcast and, and kind of throwing down Um, an amount of money every month to support me and what I'm trying to do here. So if you want to join that, you can go to, again, the website and uh, you can click on, I think it's membership. If you click on membership, then it pulls up the uh, Patreon page and you can put down a dollar a month, two dollars a month, five dollars a month, whatever you can afford. And that helps um, run the show. So, you know, I don't have a subscription. I'm not going but disappearing behind a paywall, but um, it's nice when people support the show and it helps pay the bills. Speaking of paying bills, I got a new sponsor, which is always very exciting to to get a new sponsor and um, talk about some new stuff. And you'll remember in the past, I, I think I talked about how I wasn't going to take on just random sponsors for sponsors' sake, but I wanted to take on sponsors who are actually kind of congruent with what I'm talking about. So I think I found one, or they found me, one or the other. Um, this week's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Um, and this is kind of cool. So if you need some some basically some counseling, BetterHelp is online counseling for you. Um, you can connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. They The, the licensed professional counselors in this case, um, they specialize in anxiety, um, depression, stress, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief and self-esteem. So there's lots of ways that you can, uh, or lots of topics that you can reach out on. Um, they've got like 3,000 US licensed therapists across 50 states. You can communicate in a variety of different ways, text, chat, phone, video. Um, and you can, the other cool thing is you can get started in as little as 24 hours. So um, this is kind of cool. You guys know that I do um, counseling and I have done for a long time, but I kind of have limited availability. So for those of you that want to get stuck in, I think this is this is ideal. You can do it, again, um, because you can do it through different modalities in terms of how you communicate. It'll work on desktop. It'll work on your iPhone or Android. Um, they've got, you know, broad expertise in the network. Um, so there's lots of good stuff to talk about. So, and it also says financial aid is available for those who qualify. So, um, yeah, that's cool. Um, it's not a crisis line, though. So if you do need immediately help, then please contact a crisis line. This is kind of ongoing. Well, not ongoing, but this is counselling. Um, best of all, it's a truly affordable option. The Anxiety Podcast listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code Anxiety Podcast. So check it out. Go to betterhelp.com slash anxiety podcast. Fill out the questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched to a counsellor you'll connect with brilliantly. 
Um, so yeah, give it a shot. That's betterhelp.com slash anxiety podcast. Thank you to my sponsor. Um, yeah, it's fun having sponsors because uh, it helps pay my hosting fees and Libsyn fees and all the rest of it. It costs a lot of money to keep 386 episodes around forever, you know, so um, this stuff all helps. And that one is particularly relevant because it's online counselling, so I was kind of excited to talk about that one. Um, this week's episode, as I mentioned, is about procrastination and... Uh, this came up actually on my More Life Mastermind group call, which was today, the last one. Everybody was very sad um, to depart, but <clears throat> that's the last one of this season or this series. I've done two series now. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to start a new session in the new year, so stay tuned for that. I will pick the start date probably soon, and I'll be sending out an email and probably talking about it on the next episode in terms of when it's going to start. But yeah, you want to sign up quick and, and lock in your spot for that one. Because I think having, and for those of you who don't know, the More Life Mastermind is a weekly call. <clears throat> Historically, it's been every Sunday. We get on the phone for an hour. We share updates. We share challenges, successes, and all that kind of stuff. And I think, you know, generally the feedback I receive from people is that familiar ongoing place to, to check in. And uh, one of the people on the Mastermind today said that they just haven't had that kind of environment where they could be that vulnerable, open, and uh, not feeling any shame or anything for, for a very long time. So that makes me feel good. It makes me feel like we're onto something. So I did that today. Um, I'm making this on a Sunday. I'm going to publish it as soon as I've done. And then I went in my sauna, and I sat in a sauna, which is uh, something I've been doing a bit more of, feels amazing. And I wrote some notes for a kind of this episode on procrastination. So that's really what I want to get into today. What I want to share some more about, as I said at the top of the show, I've done a new a number, a noomba of episodes on procrastination. And um, yeah, so it's something that comes up. I think procrastination and anxiety are closely linked um, for reasons I will explain now. Um, so I think at a high level, anxiety can paralyze you. It can make you stop dead in your tracks. And I've experienced this myself before where I've been having some anxiety around something or just some general anxiety or a panic attack, whatever flavor you want. And it just makes me put my life on pause. There's like a massive pause button in front of me and I just slap it, high five the pause button and everything stops. Like, you know, your plans stop, your health stops, your personal development stops. You go into survival mode. You go into primal mode. You go into like, right, how do I get through the next five minutes? Not, oh, I wonder where I'll go on holiday next year. That's not what you're thinking about. You're thinking immediate, short term, my life is at threat. Things are terrible. How do I go on? What is the point? So that anxiety and paralysis thing, if you felt that before or you're feeling it now, is very normal. And I'm going to challenge you around how to engage with it moving forward. But if you're feeling that currently, then you're in good company. Um, lots of us have or are feeling like that at the moment. And I think it's funny how at times in our lives, we play long term and we plan long term, you know, think of the concept of marriage and having a pension or saving for retirement or having children or home ownership. Um, so there's lots of things we do in life at times where we're like, right, I'm planning to live till I'm old. I'm going to have kids and grandkids probably. Um, I want to have enough money so that when I stop working when I'm old, I'll be able to like buy stuff and eat. Very important. And then there's other times in our lives when anxiety is high. So that kind of, this is kind of a scale, like lower anxiety. Maybe you look out longer term. Higher anxiety goes into like what's in front of my eyes. Like if I could just, if I could live through the next 10 minutes, I don't give a shit what happens. Like I just got to get through this one thing and then everything will be fine. Like I've been there myself when I'm like going into something severe or having some severe anxiety. And I'm like, I don't even care about tomorrow. I just want to feel better like in a minute. Like I just want to feel better, just get over this one little hump. So it makes anxiety, makes our lens of the world very close up and very immediate, short term. I need to stop the pain. And um, anyway, without anxiety, you can feel free to ponder your future and all the rest of it. I think, but I think, I think this is an interesting connection anyway, because um, usually, most of the time, everything is okay. And then we go back to our longer term planning. So it's this short term hiccup um, that we, that we kind of let interrupt our flow and then 
you know, so many people, so many times have said to me, like, I can't believe how long I let it control me for in terms of making me stay still and making me waste time, just wasting time, which is our most precious resource. Um, a good example of me procrastinating is uh, opening mail, or it used to be anyway, opening the post. So I get the post, and I, I talked about this today on my phone call, and I'd stack it up in the corner and say, right, it's very efficient if I open post at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning with my cup of tea, and uh, I'll go through all the posts, I'll pay the bills and file it away and scan it. I scan it into my computer, or I scan it into my cloud, or the cloud, so that it's there for the future, and then I get rid of the bits of paper because I just I haven't got time for that. But then what happened was is I'd miss a Sunday and then it'd be like two weeks of mail on the table and I'd be like, oh God. And then some of, some of the bills are over late, so then they over late, overdue. So then they send me another letter. It's compounding now. Um, they send me another letter saying, uh, right, not only did you not pay your bill, but you owe an extra percentage because you didn't pay your bill. Bollocks, now I owe more money. So I changed my tactic on this a little while ago, six months ago, seven months ago or something. I stopped, stopped with my idea of, you know, sometimes we... we convince ourselves that consolidating activities will be efficient but it actually just allows us to procrastinate and then not get it done so what i said was right i'm going to check the mailbox every day and if there's something in it i'm just going to deal with it right um it's like the ohio method which i've talked about in the past only handle it once the ohio method so i attributed that to the post so i come in after work grab the mail out the mailbox walk into the kitchen I got a bank statement, great. I just open up the envelope, scan it into my phone scanner thing, and then shred it. If I got a bill to pay, I'll just log on either on my iPhone or on my desktop, pay the bill, move on. Just while, you know, while I'm winding down after work, having a having a cup of tea, lots of tea going on here, pay the bills, get it done. Never any bills, you know. So two things happen. One is that I feel like I'm doing well because I'm ticking things off in real time. It's gratifying, it's satisfying, satisfying. It feels nice to make that progress. But the other thing is I can go to bed at night thinking I got nothing to do, bill or opening letter wise. It's all been done, which feels liberating. Like the worst case is going to be a couple of things when I get home the next day, but there's nothing else to do at the moment. Whereas all of those, I suppose my point is that all of those things historically were like hanging over my head. I was like, oh, I know at some point that's going to be a bloody nightmare to go through all that paper and some of the bills, which I got twice because I didn't pay the first one. Annoying, right? So pay your bills in real time. Um, And there's lots of things, if you think of the analogy of that, just doing things when you get them rather than, you know, consolidating and and waiting. It's like, you know, could be the same with washing your clothes, right? If you waited till the weekend to do all your clothes, then you got all the laundry and all the putting away. Whereas if you save up to you just got enough for one load, you throw it on, comes out the dryer, put it in the drawers, it's over with, right? I don't do the laundry at my house, so I'm making that up. But um, actually, at the moment, we have my eldest son, who's 13, nearly 14 in about a week. And as part of his allowance revenue generation, he folds the clothes up and put away. However, and he'll probably never listen to this, so I can say this with with, uh, no problem. He takes ages to put them away. Like, they'll be spread all over the living room floor, and he's sat amongst them watching TV. I'm like, mate, just put the clothes away now, because it looks like we live in a laundrette. He's like, yeah, I will. It's just I'm busy. And I'm like, no, just fold them now and put them away in the next five minutes, please. Get rid of them. Anyway, a slight diversion. Well, also on the procrastination front, um, moving toward problems and, and having hard conversations, right? One of my old CEOs used to say to me, always run towards problems. Always run towards problems. So if, you know, if something bad is going on with a relationship or in that case a customer um, or whatever it happens to be just pick up the phone and talk to them immediately and yeah they might shout at you they might be upset but um, having the fact that you need to have hard conversations is they rarely get better by putting time off or by putting them off time wise they don't get better with some time to settle down then what happens is um, you know if you think about it if it's bad news it's and you're going to be the bearer of bad news, then that's bad enough. But when you also don't communicate the bad news, then it appears like you don't give a shit or you're somehow negligent in some other way and you've just like forgotten. So getting in front of it, the at least you can do is it seems like you're, you know, willing to sort of fess up for your mistakes. You're willing to stand up and be recognized and get in front of it. So it's always better when you suck it up, pick up the phone or go and see the person, have the conversation. 
Um, and and that's it. It gets better, right? I was watching an episode of uh, the TV program Ballers last night with uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, in it. And there's one episode where the general manager of the football team says to this one of the other characters, he says, right, you got to go and tell this guy that we're cutting him. you got to go and tell him that he's fired. So he goes to the guy's house, uh, the player's house. It's his daughter's birthday. He walks in. You know, there's lots going on. And he can't bring himself to tell the guy. And um, so he leaves. And, and as he's driving home with his wife, he's like, yeah, I couldn't tell him. But turn the car around. I'm going to go back and tell him now. When he got back there the second time, the player had received a call from the GM who told him in no uncertain terms, in a not particularly nice way, that he was fired. And so the guy was like throwing his patio furniture in the swimming pool and smashing the place up. And he said to the original guy who was supposed to tell him, I wish you just told me it would have been way better coming from you. Right. So that's another example of like, you might think you're doing other people a favor by not telling them the truth or not having that difficult conversation, but you're actually making it worse. And, you know, that uh, isn't good. I read this book recently, um, which if you're in sales, you should probably read it. It's pretty, pretty awesome. It's called Never Split the Difference. And it's written by a guy called Chris Voss, who is a former, the former head FBI hostage negotiator. So he knows his stuff. And um, in the, in along the lines of what I just talked about, one of the things he, he, one of his concepts is called the accusation audit. That's what he calls it. So if you're phoning somebody up to to have a difficult conversation, before they can even get to like giving you a hard time, you basically call it all out at the start of the call. He said it many times in his career, he's phoned people up and the opening words of his conversation have been, listen, I'm an asshole. Like that's how he's opened the phone call. He said, like, I've done this. I caused these problems. I'm so sorry. And a lot of the time, the person on the other end of the phone saying, listen, it's not that bad. Whereas if he'd said nothing and he'd come in just trying to like cover it up, then the other person then goes and feels like they have to lay the lay the smack down so you get the message. So sometimes if you get on the phone and admit the mistake or call it out, then um, then the other person may feel uh, less inclined to give you a beating for it. All right. Um, I've had procrastination around going to the gym before and um, working out. And over time, I think, you know, I do feel like building procrastination is like building a a sort of reflex or building a muscle or building a something that you can lean on and you think to yourself like oh that time when I really didn't want to go but I still went and I felt better afterwards you start to build enough of those memories so that you get it done and like that this happened to me yesterday I felt I feel way better today I got so much energy um, but yesterday I was like drained and fatigued and I was like what the hell and I think maybe because I I slept like 10 hours last night so I probably just got some really good sleep but I felt fatigued anyway, and I needed to go to the gym. I'd missed a day during the week, and I went and did it anyway. It was terrible, but I got it done. I felt a bit better afterwards. Um, But that's a good example of in the past, I just wouldn't have done that. So, you know, do you got to do your stuff. And that's why I think for so many people who work out in the morning, if you can work out before your day starts and work out while you're asleep, now you're talking, I didn't feel a thing. Um, But if you can work out, first thing in the morning, you'd have to think about it all day. You can't procrastinate about it because it's over, right? Whereas if you work out after work or in the evening, you've got all day to think about it. You're like, well, I had a, I had a burger for lunch and that donut. So what's the point of working out now anyway? Like it just starts to be less and less likely. And there's been studies done around, you know, units of willpower and your units of willpower deteriorate throughout the day because you get more tired and you use them up as a there's a finite amount of willpower that you've got apparently so i think that's why I'm, i might work out tomorrow morning before i go to work it's you know because i've been flip-flopping between mornings and evenings and mornings are just hard because you roll out of bed and you're like god i gotta go to the gym that's hard but then when it's done it's over so i'm gonna try that again tomorrow there's my commitment um and i think positivity and negativity comes into play quite a lot here as well if you think of like the saying i think it was um i was gonna say tom ford it wasn't tom ford he's the fashion designer um i can't remember who it was the original ford what's his name i've lost it uh but i believe henry ford there we go oh my god so embarrassing not tom ford but i'm sure tom ford said good stuff as well he definitely has some nice clothes and some nice smelling uh 
aftershave I've had before. Um, if you think you can or think you can't, you're right. You ever heard of that before? If you think you can or think you can't, you're right. So like our belief in our ability to get stuff done is is a direct result of our level of positivity around it. And uh, I think it's Henry Ford that said that. So, you know, the, there's things that in procrastination wise, um, there's things that we just don't want to do as well. So we might feel like we're procrastinating, but maybe we just don't want to do them ever and they're not good for us. So take them off the list. And I think if you dig deep down inside you, you'll know which are the things that you're putting off because you definitely don't want to do them. And probably more often you're putting off because you do want to do them. It's just you, you're you a little bit afraid or you're a little bit scared or it's going to take time or it's going to be painful or it's going to hurt or it involves somebody else, etc. So when they're out of fear, you've got to move towards them, right? And that takes me back to my whole lean-in methodology. But I think if you sit with it, you'll know whether it's something you're avoiding, again, due to procrastination or whether it's just outright wrong for you. So listen to that. Um, another thing I was thinking about is don't let um, past experiences dictate your future, right? Um, so just because you tried something in the past and it didn't work out for you. Do you know how many times in my life I've tried to get healthy fitness-wise? A lot of times. I'm getting there now and I'm nearly 42. It's taken me bloody ages to get into like reasonable shape because I never really committed to it. I'd like do a bit and I'd go to the pub and then I'd do a bit and then I'd get some food. Never really stuck to it for long enough. And whether I'll stay at the same intensity I'm at now forever or not, I don't know. But um, it's not a surprise that I never got there because I never gave it the attention that it needed to, to get there. So just because you didn't succeed in the past, whether that be financially in a relationship that failed and broke down, you're not broken. It's not forever. There's lots of people in the world, right? There's, if you think about the chances it took for you to meet your significant other, a lot of it is situational, where you're based, and there's, there's just so many, there's so many opportunities to to start again that you can't think that one relationship that went bad is the end for you. I don't agree with that at all. So. And I also don't subscribe to like you're you're too old or it's too late or you know et cetera et cetera because I think when you do catch fire like when things are good and you're feeling great in my life anyway I look at the things when I've had like a lot of success in relationships in finance in like education and personal growth they're in small periods of time like they've been pretty small periods of time because I've had like massive focus massive energy massive excitement um, and yeah, during that time, things have been created. Like when I got into um, buying real estate, I got super focused around buying houses for a while. And so I bought a bunch of houses in a short amount of time. Turned out to be fortuitous because the market went up for a, for a bit. So that kind of worked out well. Um, but yeah, I got like, I got obsessed around real estate investing and learning how to do it. And I went to all the networking events. I met all the people. I've done the same thing with anxiety, right? With like learning about it and mastering it and and now obviously creating a podcast out of it. And I do these things because I just love learning new things and I, I like developing. And so, but each time I've done something, it's happened over a short amount of time because I just make it, you know, I just get relentless about it. Um, and I'm, I'm super passionate about it. And the same, in the same way I did for mental health and physical health, like, um, Although those are lifelong commitments, so they're things that I want to do for a long time, you can have short-term results if you just go for it. And so when there's something in my life that I'm super passionate about or jazzed about, I can always find extra time for that. It's weird, isn't it, how you can always find extra time for the things you want to do. So, um, for instance, if you're on Netflix and it says watch the next episode now, you click that button, you can find another hour or two at night time. It's amazing, isn't it? You're up till midnight. You're supposed to go to bed at 10. But you can always find more time for another episode. But you can't find an hour to go to the gym. Or you can't find an hour to read that book or take that course or whatever the thing is that you want to do. But you can when you're like jazzed about it and excited about it and passionate. You can find the extra hour. You just have to trade it for something else. You have to trade an hour of two episodes of Ballers to work out yourself right? A um, couple more things here because this is turning into a bit of a long episode, but I like it. It's good. 60 second rule or the 90 second rule or the 80 second rule. I don't know what the rule is, but one of those rules, if it's something you can do in like a minute or two, just do it now. 
don't wait. Right? If that's like, oh, that taking the rubbish out has been bothering me. I should have done it. Just do it now. Just go. Grab it. Go. Think of it in your head. 60 second rule. Can I do this in 60 seconds? Yes. Going to do it now then. Just get on with it. Right? Um, so other things you can do about it, as I talked about earlier, lean into it. Like my whole concept is like things are going to be uncomfortable. You got to build the resilience and build the muscle, choose the harder path, do the difficult thing, lean into it now. Are you going to get it right? hundred percent of the time? No. Are there still things that I procrastinate about? And I should have done already. Yes, but not for, not as many as they used to be. Now I'm like much more ruthless about like, just get it done and move on. Act quickly for the things that you'll know you have to do at some point anyway. Look for opportunities. Because you know what happens otherwise. Eventually you end up doing the thing. Taking the rubbish out. Or um, Here's a literal example. Which I'm, I promise you I'm going to do as soon as I finish recording this. The window to my sauna when it got delivered was a bit dusty. It's still a bit dusty. And every time I go to down to the sauna I'm like oh I should just go and grab the bottle of Windex and do it now. I'm like, no, 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 I'll do it afterwards. Well, afterwards, I'm drenched with sweat and I go in the shower. So anyway, this never happens. But it's a good example of like, I could just go and do it now. Like the next time I think about it, go and do it, right? So look, I've got a challenge for you, which is look in your life for opportunities to practice squashing procrastination and crushing it. And um, if there's something you've been putting off, just do it now. Get on with it. Ask yourself the question. This is a few ways to find out things that you've been procrastinating. What am I avoiding Right now, what are you avoiding in your life that you know you need to do? Write a list right out at the top of the page. What am I avoiding in my life right now? Or a different way of asking the same question. What's the few things I just don't want to do at this moment in time? Or what, another way of putting it might be like, what is something that I don't want to talk about? Right? So a few different examples of all that stuff. And I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Um, You know, a lot of people tell me, they're like, yeah, I want to meditate and journal and eat well and exercise often. And they don't. They're just like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start tomorrow. You can't start tomorrow. It's like if you you were my client or my friend and you're like, yeah, I want to get really healthy next year. I'd be like, that's bullshit. Start now. Like it's nearly December. You have a whole month head start on everybody else. And then when you are eating pie with cream on the top uh, for Christmas lunch. You'd be like, I earned this. This is good. Don't start till January 1st. You know what happens on January 1st? It's New Year's Day, so not a lot. Everybody's got a hangover. But on January 2nd, incidentally, my birthday, um, everybody goes to the gym, super busy at the gym through to the end of January, and then everybody stops. That's just the world over. Every year, same thing. It's human nature. So if you want to start something, don't wait. Start now. Don't procrastinate. Take some action. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I enjoyed sitting in the sauna, um, getting sweaty and making it for you. Um, If you've enjoyed this episode or any of the other ones or all of the other ones, please go to wherever you consume this and leave a review for me. It means the world to me. It helps promote the podcast and spread the word, whether that is on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or iHeartRadio or Google Play or Stitcher or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, Yeah, that's all I got for you. Um, next week I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different and probably answering some listener questions. So until then, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the anxiety podcast. For more information, go to the anxietypodcast.com.